get your boxing is a way of life t-shirt by following the link in the description. Dillian White versus Andy Ruiz going out to Aaron Willoughby. Let's get into it. This is an interesting fight from the standpoint that both of these guys have similar fighting styles. They've both been in the ring with Anthony Joshua. Of course, Andy Ruiz pulling off the upset, giving Joshua his first loss, but of course, losing in the second fight. And Dillian White was stopped by Anthony Joshua. Both of these fighters are at a crossroads in their careers. So a fight between the two at this point will be a good fight. It would determine who would get more opportunities versus who would be left behind. I have to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of either one of these guys. They're kind of on the mediocre side, although they're considered amongst our top heavyweights today. Not the best heavyweight era, but it is what it is. Some fans consider him a one-hit wonder because he didn't capitalize on the upset he pulled off against Joshua. That was a big upset in boxing, but he just didn't seem to have the discipline, the focus, or the determination. He lost to Joshua the second time, which I really don't hold against him, but after that, he just became inactive. And you always hear me fuss about inactivity, but how are you gonna be great when you're not even fighting? One thing I will give Andy Ruiz is the hand speed for a guy his size. Now that's just phenomenal. He showed toughness and grit in that first fight with Joshua, so he's not afraid of a fight. Andy Ruiz has a lot of heart and is tough as nails. Two advantages I give Andy Ruiz against Dillian White is the hand speed and his chin. He seems to take a better punch than White. Now, moving on to Dillian White, I feel like Dillian White is a better overall fighter than Andy Ruiz. Dillian White is more skilled and technically sound. Dillian White is also a switch hitter, which gives you more looks in there. Dillian White is also a good body puncher, which won't be good for Andy's lack of conditioning. Both of these guys have been floored, but I think that Andy has the better punch resistance. Although I'm not a particular fan of either one of these guys, I truly feel that this will be an entertaining fight. This fight would produce back and forth, toe to toe action. And I can guarantee you that these guys will trade knockdowns. This fight would come down to heart, determination, and conditioning. Who wants it more? Who's coming to fight? Who's coming better prepared? Who has the better chin? And these are the things that are going to determine who wins this fight. Ruiz has the better chin, whereas White has the better conditioning. White has the better punch placement, whereas Ruiz has the better hand speed. They both have tasted the canvas but I feel that Ruiz has recovered better in the past. Dillian White has the height and reach advantage, standing at six foot four inches with a reach of 78 inches, as compared to Ruiz standing at six foot two inches with a reach of 74 inches. My conclusion is a Dillian White TKO victory late in the fight. Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think. And I will see you on the next video. If you like the channel, share, promote, and subscribe. Boring, boring, boring. Running, running, running. Clinching, clinching, clinching and holding, holding, holding. I've heard this for years, and I'm ashamed to admit that I used to say this very same thing. Whenever we see a fighter who chooses not to engage, not to trade shots, 
not to brawl. And when we see a fighter who practices the art of hit and not be hit, and we see them utilizing good footwork, we call it running. And when we see a fighter utilize the clinch and tie their opponents up, which is a legal strategy in boxing, then we want, we want to accuse that fighter of always running and hugging. And frankly, this is only boring to people who don't understand what they're watching and who don't understand the true nature of the sport. Granted, you have different kinds of fights. You have tactical matchups, you have your slugfest, and you, and you have something in between. But let me tell you, as much as I enjoyed the Gaddy versus Ward trilogy, you're not going to get that every fight. As a matter of fact, those type of fights are rare. But if you have a true understanding of the sport, in my opinion, then you're able to enjoy a good tactical matchup. You're able to enjoy a great display of the sweet science. When we're watching professional boxing, we're not watching a Rocky movie, okay? As much as I enjoy Rocky, I have a lot of love for Sylvester Stallone and all those actors, and I love the franchise. I have the DVD set at my house. That's not boxing. And you're not gonna have a slugfest every fight. You're not gonna have Gaddy versus Ward every single fight. And you shouldn't want that every single fight because you get bored. The beauty of boxing is the variety. We see a variety of fighters, a variety of styles, a variety of game plans, methods. You have your pure boxers, you have your boxer punches, you, you have your speed fighters, you have your brawlers, you have your maulers. But at the end of the day, a win is a win. Yes, this is a reference to the Devin Haney, George Cambosos fight. It was a boring fight because Devin Haney chose not to trade. It doesn't matter that he's not that type of fighter, but because he chose not to trade, swap punches and brawl, now he's a boring fighter. Never mind that he's the champion now. He's a boring fighter because he didn't go rock him, sock him with George Cambosos. If my memory serves me correctly, isn't that the way that Tiafimo Lopez fought George Cambosos? So wouldn't that tell you that that's not the right way or the best way to fight George Cambosos is to sit there and trade with him? I thought the objective of boxing was to hit and not get hit. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? Now, if you choose to be that blood and guts warrior, or if you have limited skill sets to where you have no choice but to be that blood and guts warrior, you assume the risk and, and you're successful at it, more power to you. But don't knock a fighter who doesn't want to fight that way, who doesn't want to take that damage who doesn't want to give their opponents any advantage you don't owe your opponents any advantage your objective is to go in there and to win and if that was me I would find a way to fight and win without the risk factors without taking unnecessary punishment now granted you're gonna get hit every fighter gets hit but you can minimize the damage. If you have the, the defensive skills and, and if you have the ring IQ. So it makes no sense for someone who has the skills to pull it off. It makes no sense for someone who's good at hitting and not getting hit to get hit for the sake of entertainment. Just the fact that the fight is taking place is all the entertainment I need, okay? You have two guys in there 
with a game plan. That's entertainment to me. I want to see whose game plan will prevail. That's entertainment to me. It doesn't, every fight doesn't have to be a rock'em, sock'em, slug it out affair to be a good fight. I'm sorry, it doesn't. Now don't get me wrong, I like a good slug fest just like the next man. But that's not all I want to see. I like this. I like to see the technical sweet science. I like to see guys thinking in there. I like to see guys using defense and different tactics in there. You know, I don't want to see fighters bloodied up every single fight. Come on now. I don't want to see guys just going going in there punch for punch. I can watch a street fight for that. But professional boxing and street fighting are not the same thing. Boxing is just not going in there winging punches. I don't know everything about boxing, but I do know that. And any boxer that has been in there, I'm sure would agree with me. Boxing is an art. You go into every fight with a fight plan. Whether the fight plan works or whether the fight the fight plan doesn't work. Every fighter has a fight plan. Now whether they stick to the plan or, or not, the fact is at the beginning, you go in there with a fight plan. Boxing is, is just not mindless slugging. And if that's what you're looking for, you're gonna be disappointed. Every now and then you'll get that kind of fight. We had that kind of fight between Jamel Charlo and his opponent's name escapes me. I'm sorry. I'm getting older. My memory's going a little bit. Castano. Castano. I'm sorry. And that, that was good back and forth action. Okay? All I'm saying is just appreciate every fight for what it is. I'm not saying that you have to like every fight because I don't like every fight. There's some fights that I could that I could have done without. But if I don't want to see the fight, I simply won't watch it. I just won't watch it. I'm not going to I'm not going to knock a fighter or I'm not going to tear a fighter down because that particular style or that particular fight wasn't my cup of tea. It is what it is. There's something in this sport for us all. But at, at the end of the day, give credit where credit is due. Okay? Devin Haney fought a formidable opponent. And don't tear George Cambosos down now. Because a lot of us, the same people that were singing his praises before this fight, is tearing him down after the fight. And that's how fickle these fans are today. George Cambosos is still a solid fighter. But Devin Haney implemented his game plan. He fought the fight that he was supposed to fight. And he won. I can go on and on. But I'm sure you don't want me to. So I'll save it for another video. Take care. Peace.